Adam Ray. It's great to have you here. Hey, guys. Hey, who was that in here? Oh, he was a very hey, magical, jolly man. Take that as a huge compliment. We just have maybe the biggest celebrity on earth. Ever. In oh, the shit. studio. We're like, mm-hmm. all right, Adam Ray's coming in. Yeah, mm-hmm. we booted him. Uh, wow. Made yeah. space. All right, all right, well, thanks for letting me come back. Well, we're glad you're here because we have more news on Jesse Smollett. The city of Chicago says it will sue him to recoup the $130,000 spent on the, vac- on the investigating his uh, fake hate crime. Thursday, we know a jury found the former Empire actor guilty of disorderly conduct for lying about the 2019 incident. He faces up to 15 years in prison, but legal experts say it's more likely he'll stay out of jail, get probation. Uh, a statement Somebody from... Somebody tweeted you know, me some a funny meme or something, which is like, uh, thank you to Jesse Smollett for hiring black actors in traditionally white roles. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it was funny. It's really, really good. Funny. Yeah. Here's what the city of Chicago's director of public affairs says. The city intends to continue to pursue its lawsuit to hold Smollett accountable for his unlawful actions and to demand that he compensate the city for costs incurred by the Chicago Police Department, which took his false claim of harm seriously. I don't know how much he was making on Empire. Does anyone know? It's a good question. It's always funny when they... It, yeah, was he like a series reg was he getting like 30 and up? i i don't i don't know but when you see these people like he's a hollywood actor making hundreds of thousands of dollars like eh, i didn't realize first off you live in la manager yeah. agent tax scale. man I mean, you're not you're not walking with that much in in your pocket does he have oh i got it money 39 year old actor was paid 65 grand per episode Boom, dude, you're fine. Nice. And how many? Which means he would receive around 1.17 million in total. It says. So he's doing okay. 1.17, 1.1, 1. Yeah. 1, or close to 1.2. Now, yeah. I, so I, I read was. somewhere that like he was going to get killed off or was getting fired and had an album coming out too. And this is why he did this. Do you know? Does that sound? I know right? he sings because I have a vague recollection, and maybe Chris can find it. Of going to a Jesse Smollett concert? <laughs> yeah, but I think I got roofied. <laughs> um, and then taken. When the um, he came to L.A., or after this whole thing, came back to L.A. and put on a small event mm. and did oh, the, yeah. the... The greatest is all the clips of you know him crying in front of whoever's interviewing him or him talking about justice, you know, standing on the stage five days later or whatever, whatever it was. But there is, there's footage of him doing a concert, I think out here in Los Angeles, several days after the, after the attack. Yes. He performed. Trying to ride that wave. Mm -hmm. What was that, Chris? Is I making that up? Yeah. He had a concert at the Troubadour in West Hollywood. Um, like a month after or <coughs> February. Wow. Yeah. I am more, I, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm jealous. I, I learned I learned this at um, well. So the, the Jesse Smollett thing it kind of taught me what I learned from. Uh, I took a flight back to L.A. from New York. Ended up sitting right next to or just behind or something. Uh, Jim Brown. Nice. Legendary running back, obviously. Yeah. And let's see. Tommy Davidson? Tommy Davidson. Thank you. I could think of it the Pazone. He, he, he did Pizza <laughs> wow. Hut commercials where he's like selling the Pazone guy, right? <laughs> now, well, uh, is that the Pazone guy? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, no disrespect to Tommy Davidson. No way. But the money. he's the Pazone guy, oh. and the other guy's Jim yeah. Brown, right? Hall of Famer. And they were. There were thick as thieves, and they, they were, you know, but it was kind of clear it's because they're both black. Yeah. There's no white version of that, is what uh, is what I'm saying. I, I sit next to Barbara Streisand on a plane. She thinks I'm a piece of yeah. shit. You know what I mean? It's not like, hey, we're the same color. Yeah. What, are, the same what, what do we got? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bono, he turned his nose yeah. up at me. No, nope. God. Me. I never stopped throwing up. Yeah. Johnny Unitas back in the day probably wouldn't have even had a lot to talk about. I did. You know, done a couple things on TV, but it's not. Hey, we, take we, yeah, we'd have to know each other. Right. Wouldn't we just be? We're both white guys. We have this yeah. I, I know. I'm telling you that Jesse Smollett thing. He he had every politician, every black composer, every the biggest names in yeah. sports. Like Jesse's a dear friend and a dear soul and a wow. dear. He had a bit part yeah. on a show. I, Never heard no the name for that. Possible way you guys. 
course, you know, I just texted Jesse. I wished him strength and healing. Love and light. Like, love and light. Wants to Quincy him. Jones? What? <laughs> like, who the fuck? Yeah. Like me, oh yeah, Burt Bacharach. He fucking loves me, that guy. Yeah, I mean, because we're white. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He likes jack off comedians <laughs> from fucking Deep Cable, and he's Burt Bacharach. He doesn't know the fuck I am, and he probably, if he did, he wouldn't like me. He's not texting me inspirational no. things about Chuck Mangione's not texting me anything nice or Herb Alpert or any of the great bugle men of, of our time. I'm going to Herb Alpert's restaurant tonight. Really? Yes, I am. Right. You and I. We're on the same page, Simpatico. Man. Yeah, like I know a, a couple of white dudes from this town. They're yeah. not particularly fans of mine. <laughs> well, you need, you need a scandal to find out who your real friends That's are. That's true. That's what it is. Do you think John Popper would work? come out and say Adam Carolla's a dear friend? Oh, he might. Oh, yeah, John. He yeah, would. John, John yeah. might Do you think the lead so? singer of Smash Mouth would come out and be like, Steve Harlow? Steve Harlow. Harlow. I don't know <laughs> Adam Carolla. You know what, though? Say, yeah, that's not. Yeah, Matt McGrath says. would. Mark, Mark, Mark McGrath. 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 No, 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 no. No, let's. Right. You know what? That was a. I know. Slip up. Everyone talks about Mark, and no one gives any credibility to Matt McGrath, <laughs> who's the one that came up with the name Sugar Ray. <laughs> Matt's sitting there like, I'm the one who came up with the band name. You I, said it. First off, no one. If something happened to me. <laughs> there would definitely not be white guys telling me to stay strong and no. t- talk no. about what a, ge- a dear and gentle soul would be like. Hey, he's half a douche. I didn't like him that much last time I saw him. I could get ever the people that came out of the the woodwork. I mean, he he had yeah. Maxine Waters, Kamala and Harris, Kamala Harris, and all these big celebrities. Yeah. And I'm like, eh. Who do you think you would have? White guys? Yeah, like I don't know, like I don't know, Matt yeah. Lauer, publicly. And- Pete Lee. That's the whole thing. They they would distance themselves yeah. from me. Yeah. I don't, they'd I don't, pile they, on. They, they, would, they, would, they wouldn't try to send out their little wishes of hope and strength and, no. and talk about what dear friends we were when we weren't friends. How about this? Where would you stage your attack if you oh. had to small A it? Well, I mean, first thing first, I would, I would find a place that had some representation, like mm-hmm. the middle of downtown Chicago. Not a lot of MAGA guys oh, floating right. around yeah. in that place. So I would set the table. You'd go the place. Palisades. Yeah, I'd, I'd go. Well, I'm trying to think who's attacking me. Okay. Oh, yeah, it depends. Oh, that's a good point. It might be the MAGA guys. Yeah. 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 Maybe closer to so far. Mm. Tina. City I, champions? I feel like James Brolin would stand behind me. Yeah, not Josh. I, interesting, because you, like you said, Barbara probably not a fan. James, James is, he's you in. You get James Brolin, you get Stephen Baldwin, and you get Matt McGrath. Yeah, <laughs> stand right. behind AC. That's right. Ride or die. Yeah. All right. All right. Sorry. Where were we? Well, oh, we have Jesse's. Uh, is this where he's talking it up? Yeah. So this the... is just days after um, mm-hmm. the uh, the claim. He was he, oh, he went to the, he still performed at the Troubadour. By the way, that's the move. If you, I mean, you know, I don't know who suggested concert right after, <laughs> but do you think that was in the game plan, or he was just like probably had me had to have it on back the calendar, calendar right? Sure. Exposure. But I mean, it's a consummate pro because only days after his fake beating. Yeah. Yeah. Most people want to take time to fake recover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not him. He bounced no. back. Right How back on it? stage. Here he is. Um, it's it's I'm not fully healed yet. But wow. I'm going to. And and um I'm gonna stand strong with y'all. The voice wow. cracking. The voice cracking. The act wow, dude. He's committed. And, uh, he should put this on his reel. <laughs> Don't feel emotion. Did you mean it? Wow. I just, yeah, I mean, it sounds, it sounds. I, I had to be here tonight, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds powerful, but I couldn't let those motherfuckers win. Oh my god! It is. It, we're, we're getting into stratus of sociopathy at this point, ask, right? What is the DSM five diagnosis of this guy? So Butterfly net. For love. <laughs> I will never stand for anything other than that. Regardless of what anyone else says, I will only stand for love. And I hope that you all stand with me. So thank you. And let's have a good show. Let's have a good time. Even if they say I stayed that whole fight. It gets a little surreal at wow, this point, right? Crazy. I've come around. He's our <laughs> finest actor. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's almost like, you know, if you're that good, it just kind of washes it away. I don't know. Well, that's the question. This is the question I always have for leaders of religions and, you know, mega churches, whatever. My question is always, do they believe it? 
Or do they just know that they are hosing the masses? Do, it, does he have the kind of um, uh, cork, let's say, that he now remembers this as a fact? No, I, you, know what I, you know what I think? I, I think it, this is the phenomenon we're speaking of. I think when you, uh, you know, I made a lot of uh, crank calls, mm-hmm. right? And you do this thing where you're trying to convince somebody of something, and at some point you just start getting into it. Oh, yeah. And for that moment, even you're, though you're I'm trying character. to convince a guy who runs a gymnasium that I have conjoined twins, <laughs> but I want them to compete, you know, <laughs> on a trampoline or something, and the tears will be summoned yeah. at some point. Yes. And, and, and and you go, do you really believe this? You're just kind of in it yeah. for that. You embody that moment. Yes. It's like George Costanza said, remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Right. So I guess that's true. Yeah. We need a new Black Panther. But that, that's, uh, that's right. That is surreal now watching it. Yes. And also the audience, you know. Take your time. <laughs> he needs you a minute. Yeah. So yeah. many of those people tape that on their phones. You think they're scrolling back through, you know, the way you're on a plane, maybe you scroll through some videos and pictures. Like, how many do you think stop on that, delete it because they're like, they don't want to be reminded of when they were just had? Yeah. You know? It'd, it'd be nice. But. They do a thing where they go, well, maybe this isn't didn't happen, but as long as this exists, then I can keep going right. with it. Well, maybe they should have asked Kim Kardashian to help them out because she is getting very close to becoming a real lawyer. You guys. For real. <laughs> on Monday, she uh, said she passed the baby bar law exam on the fourth try. On Instagram, she wrote, looking in the mirror, really proud of the woman looking back today in the reflection. For anyone oh. who doesn't know my law school journey, look at that oh, picture. Uh, no, this wasn't easy or handed to me. So I was confused as to how you do this without going to law school, and I'll explain it to you. Um She's not doing a traditional like state accredited law school, which means she had to pass the baby bar, which is the equivalent of completing one year of law school. So yeah. there's another way. Uh, so you can just take a test and do a year of law school. It's yeah. kind of it's it's interesting, I think. It it varies from state to state, but like some places you have to go to law school and then some places you can just try taking just, the bar. Yeah, just see what happens. I wonder if they do that with Commercial airline pilots. I hope not. <laughs> oh in Florida, we don't do a whole <laughs> lot of classroom time. But hey, if you can land this fucking plane, <laughs> You're up give there, it buddy. a shot. <laughs> like, we'll see what we'll happens. Um, she's kind of, uh, you know, I, you, I, you, you want to hate them, but then they do. They say stupid stuff like looking in the mirror and uh-huh. looking back at them, which is grotesque. But and then retarded. she's started. Then she's but doing then prison doing reform. Something, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're so good at just con- they they just won't go away. No. Mm. With, for lack of a better uh, breakdown of it. It's just like the fact that it's, look, I mean, that she's popping up and, and then it's just like, now fucking Pete, it's like, you know. Yeah. Is there uh There's no quit in this family. Uh, maybe uh, in terms of, uh, you know, getting myself pushed out even further from Hollywood, but <laughs> they have celebrities that are constantly working on freeing up prisoners and prison reform. Mm. Is there anyone in charge of locking up more black people? <laughs> Because, um, you know, I'm saying it seems like an opening there. Oh, like a vacuum. Oh, for, a, for a celebrity? Yeah. Oh, I oh, like the, the, the other way. No, it's, doing a good uh, job. Scott Bayo in charge right, of like yeah, trying yeah, to get go. more sure. right. black. I, I mean, what's all these smashing grabs? You know what I mean? Right. Just well, slap you, on the hand. These guys are out doing it the next week. You want to throw your hat in the ring? Does well, Dog the yeah. Bounty Hunter count? Hmm. I think he's he's lost a step. <laughs> okay, yeah, Remember yeah. he sprained his ankle he looking for uh, his ankle in the swamp. Yeah, Brian Laundry. Oh man, what a bummer. Yeah. If yeah. you're named Dog the Bounty Hunter and you have any sort of like, you know. <laughs> whoopsie bodily. daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say that when he sprained his ankle? No, yeah. <laughs> oh, whoopsie daisy. Dude, that's. Well, in, in the interest of not stopping to talk about the Kardener, Kardashian Jenners, uh, TMZ reports that Caitlyn Jenner got denied service at the Beverly Hills Hotel because of her ripped jeans, and she was pissed. Wow. She took to social media. Can I? Yes. Well, just so there's some context here. It wasn't the tear in the jeans. It was uh, Caitlin's dick hanging out. Yeah, the was torn right mean, across. Yeah, and you that's can't, what, they you can't go into Chili's with yeah, that. Yeah, to be fair. It was the jeans that oh. was the issue. See, this is fake news, because that mm-hmm. wasn't even in this report. They didn't say the hog was no. hanging out of the jeans? She wrote, fuck your horrible service, for, and we have a picture of the jeans, <laughs> for not letting me have lunch with this tiny 
rip in my jeans. Shame on you. Disgusting. I've been a patron for decades. No longer. Uh, and this was at the Polo Lounge over at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Now, a rep for the Polo Lounge tells TMZ, please see our dress code policy, which is stated on our website and provided to Whoa. every guest when they make a reservation. It says, at the Polo Lounge, we encourage you to dress for the Ooh, occasion. Can I, the the yeah. hole in the knee. Can, can I say this? Um, it's an expensive hole. I've dress, out. yeah. You know, okay, dress codes. Hole in the knees. We don't want a bunch of ragtag hobos blowing mm -hmm. through this joint. Yeah, sure. But when Miners. it's a pair of $250 jeans that were intentionally. Yes. You know I mean, so there's hole in the knee. I went down to, you know, Barney's of New York and spent right. 300 yeah. bucks on jeans. And then there's hole in the knees. I blow dudes at truck stops. Right. <laughs> They're two different holes. Yeah. I'm the you know bad guy at from least Cruella. Two. Yeah. You right. Should, and, and I would argue that intentional expensive hole jeans that we're, now we're, we're, we're going against the spirit. Of right, the rule. but don't you kind of like it, like their old school approach? Like, I'm sorry, I Caitlin. do, I, I do like the it. staff should be able to recognize. You're right, like who made the hole? The people who made the jeans, or the right. person who bought the jeans? Was that worn? Did you earn that hole? Did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you other things. <laughs> that, Any hole in the and that's what, that's what I ask most people that come on my show. Adam, oh. I go, did oh, you right, earn Dr. that Phil. hole? Yeah. Okay, if that hole's going to get plugged up with something, did mm. you earn it? Okay, mm -hmm. because every hole's got a purpose, mm. and every hole's got a what. Uh, uh, oh, it's a fillism, right? Got to be filled. We'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> I knew it was a fillism. Now, now, how do we feel about hats in restaurants? Because well, I've been asked many times to leave or take the hat wow. off. Wow. See, that's what Polo that's Lounge That's a baseball do. hat. But not like not a fedora. A, no, it was a yarmulke. It was at a, <laughs> oh, well, that's it was a, at a Proud crime. Boys diner. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't want, they don't want hats. They don't want ripped jeans. They don't want crop tops, nightwear, swimwear, oh, sleeveless shirts. I'm out. Did, uh, Sleeveless leather vest. So yeah. Caitlin went to probably meet somebody yeah. there. Yeah, Ooh, for lunch. God. That I, does this. I That's went on a date there many, many years ago with a friend who whose agent asked me out. And he, and I think I've said this before, he said, would you like to go out with me tonight? It will be Algonquin. Mm. Oh. And I feel like that, I don't know what he thought that meant. Yeah, <laughs> but what? we went and he picked me up and we, I think we were at a Prius and Every time we would get to a stoplight or a stop sign, there'd be a bunch of soup cans rolling around in the trunk. Oh, and it was all very unnerving. Whoa. Yeah. I um, I actually went there for like a business meeting with some radio guys that were like out of town. Like, why don't we mm. meet at the Beverly? And I get why people go there because um, – Two guys. Uh, Mark Wahlberg was sitting right next mm -hmm. to us, and he's just like, "Hey, Adam, how are you doing?" Hey, I don't really what's know, going on? know him that. Hey, Mark. Hey, yeah, I recognize you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you come to Polo Lounge a lot? You're, you're you're eating a Waldorf <laughs> salad. Why are you so out of breath, Mark? Ah, oh, because you know you got to dig around for the for the pecans. <laughs> <laughs> they don't put the pecans right on top. You have to dig around the lettuce for them. Well, I, I, also, I've been since 4 a.m. doing power cleans. What have you been doing? Oh, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying it seems like Did they put the pecans winning. on your salad? Can I have extra pecans? I didn't get the Waldorf. I got I got the had a map on the leaf for me. Okay, but Mark, I just said, uh, you know, hi. I enjoyed your work. Uh, you know, I'm a, I, I like... Uh, Oh, uh, Fear? The fighter. The fighter, the yeah. Fighter. Good movie, yeah. It's good to be you're in great shape, man, for yeah, that. I'm always in great shape because I'm eating pecans. Because you're digging around. I'm digging around the south for pecans, man. Yeah. Boogie Sounds Nights. Like I love Boogie, yeah, Boogie Nights. Nights. I love Boogie Nights. Yeah. Boogie Nights, great movie. They used my real penis for that movie. <laughs> oh, really? She said, I didn't know. I didn't know they could do it. How do you get those pecans out there? You use that penis? What's that? <laughs> no, nothing. I don't want to. Uh, Invincible. Great Another movie. Great, three Kings. Kings. The Departed. Yeah, Kings. Three Kings. Yeah, Invincible was the base. Yeah, I, just, I beat out Tony Danza for that movie. You did? Oh. Yeah, we were in the same audition room. He came in. I basically, the, the lines that I had to read were, you know, I'm just a struggling guy from Philadelphia trying to be a football player. And Tony Danza said, hey, uh, you guys remember <laughs> when, um, oh, so there was this, so, all right, first of all, raise your hand if you've ever, if you ever had a, a wet dream about Judith Light. And they kicked him out of the audition. Wow. Because he didn't say the lines, Mark, you, know? you do a killer Tony Danza. I do a lot of fun voices. I do a Nick Cage one. Here's Nick Cage. Ready? Here's Nick Cage stubbing his toe in the dishwasher. Oh. <laughs> I do all sorts of voices. Well, I, don't, I didn't know you had that. I mean, here's obviously the, you're a great actor. His, you got range. Wait, but. Here's the, I'm not done. Here's Nick uh, Cage. Find out that he overdrew his account at the Chase ATM machine on Fairfax. Uh -huh. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, that's so spot on. Here's one more. Here's Nick right. Cage finding out that he got replaced on the Adam Carolla show by Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> wow. 
Did not. Wow, Perfect. I didn't see that one coming. Anyway, Mark, uh, hey, good luck with the pecans. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you, man. Say man find a little mother for me. Yeah, I didn't even know we were friends, but it was, it was cool. That was, it was nice. Like, it was like was it just being like that? friendly, like being yeah. cool. Yeah. See, then, uh, you're a white guy thing. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe people like you, do. Well, then I ran into Byron Allen. Oh. Comedian. Well, he's a white guy. And... Uh, <laughs> For all intents and purposes, yeah. But the point is, is I get why people go there. There's like celebrities yeah. hanging around having lunch yeah. at noon on a Wednesday. Is it the yeah. top celeb like eatery place? Like if you like seen the seen? Ivy. Oh, the Ivy might be passe at this point. I, I went there once and ran into Wahlberg and uh, Byron Allen. And that's the place. <laughs> yes, dude. I feel like hotels is kind of the sneaky place. If you're from out of town, totally. you want to mm-hmm. see celebs, mm-hmm. like yes. hotel, like outdoor patio, restaurant. Yeah. I saw, I see many celebrities at the uh, Peninsula uh, rooftop. Oh, yeah. They're just always hanging out. I took my mom and George, my stepdad, to uh, the uh, Chateau Maman. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had lunch. We got in the elevator to go back up to the main level. And Sting was in the elevator. Very wow. tiny little man. And uh, we look down, and my mom just can't hold back. She sees a celebrity, she's going to speak up. Right. So we're in the elevator. It's a very tiny elevator, and she just looks over and and doesn't even, like, say something for us. She just does this, like, she looks at me and goes, dang. <laughs> but very loud. Like, I'm doing right. the quiet story version. She was like, Sting. Right. And he just goes, Hello? <laughs> you know, wow. Again, I don't do voices, but he does, you know, he's like, Hey, what's going on? You and my do mom, do voices. And my, and my, mom, my mom just looks at him and just goes, Thank you for your music. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. Like Very the most Abba. mom thing you could say. And, and then he just and then he just took a sigh. And, and then uh, my set, and then George was like, oh, He's like, Sure, you show on tour, you're making music. And then uh, and I immediately just go, Sorry about my stepdad. And he's like, No, no, it's fine, man. And then he said he was uh, going on tour and he was just exhausted. He's like, But I can't stop. He's like, I just love it so much, I can't stop. And then my mom was like, well, if you ever need a comedian. <laughs> oh, no. And then yeah. George goes, bitch, shut your mouth. And I was oh, like, wow, wow, this is the first time I've heard George curse in an elevator. Wow. Yeah. Specifically. I'm, I met George, obviously. Yeah, he loves the, you. The Bayer. Or, well, we're up in Laguna Seca. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, we have another celebrity that has been catapulted into space, and he's back. Michael Strahan did it. Oh, wow. He went up. Mm. He went down. The Good Morning America co-host was one of six crew members who took a flight on Bezos' origin. If he said origin. Jesse Smollett, like some condolences <laughs> or hey, brother, or, you know, I'm always From here space. for you yeah. if you need anything. If if there's some, if there's anything of Michael Strahan, look for it. Doing anything with Smollett, <laughs> I'm going to fucking flip my lid. That guy's a NFL great. Should not know who this guy is. And Thank had you. a great part in uh, Magic Mike 2. Not that you guys would know. Yes. Did you know that? No. Straight handed? Yes. Good for him. This is a oh test, Adam. God. This is a test. <laughs> it was fantastic. I like I, I, I like Strahan because his story is he like grew up on an Air Force base in Germany or something. Mm-hmm. I think it's a military brat or something. But he was a fat kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just called him fat. And then his dad called him fat. Like everyone called him fat. And he's like, I, I got tired of being called fat. So I started hitting the weights. Wow. And then he's wow. in the Pro Bowl. Wow. That, uh, we wouldn't have a Michael Strahan today <laughs> wow. because uh, we'd go, you go, boy, or I don't want to body shame yeah. or any of that Good stuff. Luck. Yeah, you're husky. He was motivated heavily to lose weight because he was a fat kid. Yeah. Do you think he always, the um, the, uh, the the little gap in his teeth is becoming kind of his like staple? Absolutely. Right? Like his, do you think it, how many people... I'm always curious, like, I, I, those types of things I love on people right out of the gate, like a weird mole, a fucking bad thing. It just makes you who you are, I feel like. But there's got to have been people that, along the way, family, agents that were like, I got a great dentist in Beverly Hills. <laughs> They'll right. tighten that gap, uh, you know? Yeah. Well, his, and maybe tighten the gap on some of the roles you're booking. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's, um, he, his April Fool's joke this year was that he got his teeth fixed. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. That's funny, yeah. People mm-hmm. kind of flipped out, right? Yeah. They didn't like it. Like yeah, it. it's one of the, you know, it's a story. I'm going to add it. Chris, put on my list of things I, you know, want to do. Have the cape removed for yeah. me on stage in earnest. The, the things I want to do for. <laughs> I want to, cause, because later on, so it's like Cindy Crawford with her birthmark yeah, or mole. Or and then it's, oh, Urban Lord, they wanted me to get rid of it. But I'm super, you know, know, your know. trademark, super beauty or whatever. Yeah. I want something that somebody wanted me to change. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They wanted me to fix my earlobes. I mean, now look at me. That's you know, the suggestion is, is, yeah, and now. Right. Now look yeah. at me. Could you imagine? <laughs> 
all touching the parts. greatness. That's right. Touching perfection. Yeah, messing with a, the yeah, marble they, statue of David. Barbara Streisand has it with the schnoz. Yep. It's like the siren song that yep. my mouth, the beautiful music. Yeah. And I, could you imagine? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, man, what mm-hmm. they wanted you to do. Yeah. Same yeah. with Freddie Mercury and the teeth. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. I, all right. Add it to my list. <laughs> I want one of those. Perfect. There was a girl named uh, Bryn Doheny, if memory serves me right. She was um, sixth grade when I was in the fourth grade. And I remember she had the not only just the biggest boobs in school, mm-hmm. the biggest boobs I've ever seen in my life. Oh, in mm. sixth grade. Oh, boy. Bryn Doheny. And as a fourth grader, you're like, wow, this is incredible that I get to go to school for free and see these for mm-hmm. free. Um, and then I remember later that year hearing that she's getting a breast reduction. I don't even oh. know. I don't even know. Dude, my extent of surgeries was like, I don't know, man, wisdom teeth, mm-hmm. maybe. A briss. Mm-hmm. A briss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so all of a sudden it just becomes like that. everyone's like, I'm too big. And then you know, you hear that from the teachers, right? And then uh and then you get out to recess one day and just all of a sudden, like just nothing. And it was like, and I remember one of the teachers made her get up in class and te- because people were talking about it so much one of the teachers. How old was she? Six sixth grade. Like twelve? We were in fourth grade. Oh, wow. And we had like these, you know, assemblies, uh, you know, and student council meetings. And one of the teachers, it was just such a talk about thing that one of the teachers thought they were doing her a service by like, just kind of, you know, you speak up. And so people don't have to keep like talking oh and guessing God. and made her get up and announce that she had a breast reduction. Oh, man. That Jesus. would not fly. Oh, That's weird, very right? Dramatic. Oh, Chris, write it down. <laughs> Cock reduction. <laughs> I'm not doing it, but I want it out there. Yeah. And I want to speak about the it whispers. in front of children. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. You know how I'm on several Facebook groups? Mm-hmm. Two of them are breast reduction surgery groups mm-hmm. because I just kind of want to know what the vibe is. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've been asked by a certain person in my home not to do that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, this is, this is a lot it's of a weight. Lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very mature for a six-year-old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So if I'm gone for like an extra two days, maybe it's because I'm having my drains taken out. Wow, I don't know. two days, oh, huh? That's I it? want, uh, hold You on. have to yeah. recover. No, I like that. Uh, the weight, you know, my boom, my rack so yeah. big. I yeah. want to do that with my brain. <laughs> oh, my neck. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Why are they hold up my head? Pull around this giant brain everywhere. <laughs> Is there brain reductions? I'd like to get down to like 170 IQ, let's say. Do we know? Is there a list of people who've gotten actual wiener reductions like is there mm. like that info has got to no, be out not there Shaq. Mm. not Shaq. not Shaq. too possible but you know what i'm saying is there like a has, has anyone made it famous no i don't i don't know that they have that that info is probably not public right penis reduction or penis reduction surgery refers mm-hmm. to an effort uh, efforts or an assortment of techniques intended to decrease girth and length so assortment of techniques. <laughs> both yeah especially when erect so we have yeah. an assortment of techniques yeah. would you rather oh, have I know too much to girth do... or too much length i know how to shrink and this is for that... the group you know how you shrink that penis right now you huh? just uh, it's a therapy thing you get adam ray's mom to talk to you in an elevator <laughs> <laughs> the penis just it's a forty-two percent reduction with just just a quick, absolutely three floors. You know, <laughs> I was just making small talk. This is small talk. That's what we'll call the therapist. <laughs> Adam Wright's mom stands in an elevator. It doesn't have to be an actual elevator. Yeah, obviously, thing, have you seen any enough. good movies lately? We put it in a clinical situation. <laughs> Doors close, like when you see the beginning of the Bob Newhart show or something. It's not a it's not a sound right. stage. You know what I haven't had in a while? Lunchables. <laughs> hey, where'd your boner go? <laughs> Um, it's called macrophallism and can uh, oh. Tell can, me <laughs> can be one of the side effects of sickle cell. Mm. Wow. Oh. Oh. So did we all? Okay, okay. there that we dude go. Knows Jesse. There, there we, we go. go. Wow. Good Lord. All right, let's bring it home. But <laughs> Gladly. Look, you know, we, 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 nobody wants to go under the knife. No. We're all looking for non-surgical treatments for everything. And for this. This is good. I say Adam Ray's mom in an elevator could really be <laughs> therapy. Yeah. What would you What would you rather have, a, a brunch with Mary Steenburgen, <laughs> or a first class flight to anywhere in the world of your choice? That's that's all you need. Part of the therapy. Whoop. Hey, where's the sound effect? <laughs> Brian's working on Sorry. something. Else. Ah, <laughs> hey, where'd your boner go? <laughs> all right. Let's bring it home. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news.
I blow dudes at truck stops. Right. Gina, Gina. <laughs> that was the news. Nice. With Gina Grad. Nice. All right. Last but not least, there's the Life Lock. The holiday season of giving is also the holiday season of taking by cyber criminals. Stay safe while you're holiday shopping. Only visit secure sites, use a VPN, and create strong passwords. It's important to understand how cyber crime and identity theft are affecting our lives. Every day, we put our info at risk on the internet. In an instant, cyber criminals could harm your finances and your credit. Good thing there's LifeLock. LifeLock helps detect a wide range of identity threats like your social security number for sale on the dark web. If they detect your information has potentially been compromised, they'll send you an alert. It's LifeLock, right, Dawson? No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses, but you can keep what's yours with LifeLock Identity Theft Protection. Join now and save up to 25% off your first year with promo code ADAM. Call 1-800-LIFELOCK or head to LifeLock.com and use promo code ADAM for 25% off. Can I say this real quick because it's timely? Uh, I was at the uh, Peninsula years ago uh, for uh, uh, mother-in-law's birthday brunch. We're having brunch. And uh, famous, With Mary person, Steenburgen? famous person sits behind her. And I'm like, I'm going to pretend like I'm taking a picture of you and, and your husband Good and move. Tessa, who was a baby. And just <laughs> hang out tight. The person in the back, I don't know if you can zoom in or not. Stevie Wonder, why was I sneaking the picture? Oh, oh. That's a good point. <laughs> Stevie! <Wow. clears> and <throat> you caught a mid-secret listen. Yeah, oh, no. he looks very serious. Yeah, he's <laughs> listening, too. I mean, that's a great shot. What do you think the guy's saying on the right? You're being, someone's taking your picture. <laughs> Some bald ass someone's think... taking your picture. By the way, why, uh, all your guys' stories I think it's Matt McGrath. I was on the uh, roof deck of the peninsula, and mm. mine are, I was at the Cucaroos in Glendale. <laughs> what, why, what kind of life is everyone leading here that involves all these wonderful outings. Here's the secret. Yeah. That's God, not, it's not like an exp it's ex it's expensive. Yes. It's not out of reach. It's just, know. you know, a little price. I know my slip stories are like, I saw Danny Bonaducci at Jumbo's Clown Room. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Performing. Uh, you can go to adamcrolla.com for all the live shows if you'd like. And uh, you, can, uh, you can see us in Portland at Helium Comedy Club December 22nd, 23rd. A couple shows for today's show in... Uh, Let's see. And Break couple Bray, uh, Bray Improv. couple tickets, I mean, yeah, for the T.J. Miller show. And uh, go to amcurl.com for everything else you need. And support our good friend Adam Ray. You can check out the podcast about last night and the website adamraycomedy.com for Just all had the Sandra live Bullock shows. On. Nice. Just had Sandra Bullock on and coming up doing shows in Phoenix December 22nd, 23rd. So, until next time, Adam Crow for Adam Ray and Jason Gannon and Tina Grand Mulbrian. Say it. <laughs> Mahalo. How do we feel about hats in restaurants? Because well, I've been asked many times to leave or take the hat. Wow. Off. See, that's what Polo that's Lounge a would do. That's baseball hat. But not like not a fedora. A, no, it was a yarmulke. It was at a, oh, well, that's oh, that's it was a, a Proud Boys yeah. Diner. And, right. Yeah. <laughs>